last night that Lisa Marie Presley, age 54, had passed away. Now, I always, I think Elvis Presley is an American icon. He's like the biggest, one of the biggest um, musical stars in the world ever. And posthumously still, I think that, what did he had five million to his name after he passed away at age 42. And his widow, Priscilla, turned Graceland into a hundred million dollar enterprise. She's apparently like a business genius. I wish she would have directed her daughter with, with some of her decisions. But, I mean, it's just sad. Lisa Marie Presley passes away at age 54. I mean... Oh, man, it's just, it's sad because it feels like it's just, you know, you kind of push uh, American history like another generation away, right? Like there was that, I mean, she was their, their, the only child of Elvis. Now, here's why I'm talking about it right now, because I find it interesting. I don't know if you, re- if you know my family history or not. So I really do think that I get, I was just thinking about this last night. I think that the goth aesthetic I, ex- I actually got from my grandma. So she had dark hair naturally. And she always wore dark colors. She didn't wear pastels. She didn't wear nothing like that. She was, I think she invented the, I mean, no, I mean, I know that Eminem, they invented this, the word Stan, you know, for his song. But she was like the first Stan for Elvis. She wasn't a fan, okay? She was a disciple. And she would go pretty much almost every year. There were some years they didn't go. They went to Graceland the way that people like go to Florida every winter. Or, you know, people who are, who study Islam go to Mecca. She goes to, she went to Graceland. I watched pictures. I, it, they, she had this, these big photo albums in, uh, on her coffee table on either side of their Bible. And I would, fl- every time I was at our house, I'd flip through those photo albums. And I watched my younger aunts grow up in front of Graceland's gates because they would have pictures in the same spots every year. And she went with my great aunt, and they took their kids, and they were at El- they were at Graceland. They went to Graceland, and I think one time they were there. I think like Priscilla and Lisa Marie were there for something, and they got and it, it oh man, it just made her day. And they had this tiny little house, Grandma and Grandpa, this tiny little house in the Ozarks. I mean, this house wasn't maybe it was eight hundred square feet, maybe it was tiny. And they had one wood-burning stove in the middle of the living room, and it was shaped like an L, the living room, and then the other part was the kitchen, so the wood-burning stove was in the middle. And my favorite sound used to be early in the morning when my grandpa would put wood in it during the winter. And I sound like I'm 90, but, you know, it's just that's how people, you know, on those arcs in rural Missouri, it's how people live. And it's, it was just, you know, it was very simple and very comforting. But her decor, let me talk about this for a minute. So she had 23 grandkids, okay? We have a huge family. I'm not kidding you. We had a huge family. When I was in high school and when I would uh, start dating, my grandpa told my mom to have my mom call him and run names of potential dates past him to make sure we ain't related. That's how big our family is. I'm not even exaggerating, like, at all. This is what's so funny about this. So when you would go into her house, she would have Elvis pillows on the sofa She had framed Elvis pictures nestled in on the top. She had one of them floor televisions nestled in on the top next to the other pictures of the grandkids. Like, you know, uh, one cousin's football picture, another cousin's military picture, another, you know, the senior picture here, elementary school picture there. And then there's Elvis in a frame, too. He gets and he there were several pictures of him, like almost like he's a member of the family. She had framed pictures of Elvis uh, on the walls. She loved angels, so she would have framed pictures of angels, and then also an Elvis right there. She, yes, she did have the velvet Elvises. Let's talk, or Elvi, plural, I guess is the correct way to pronounce it. And yes, the velvet Elvi. She had an Elvis picture in the bathroom, and then when you walked out of the bathroom, the one bathroom right directly across from that door was a giant, massive velvet Elvis. Then when you went to her bedroom, she had another giant, massive velvet Elvis. And it was on the wall opposite my grandpa's gun cabinet, the one of two that they had. And so, I mean, they were everywhere. She had Elvis mementos, everything. Playing cards were Elvis. And when she passed away, I had the weirdest 
I never, I like, I'm never one of those people. I never wanted to inherit anything from her. And it's like, they, you know, God love them. They were of simple means. I inherited the, remember TV guides? Oh, yeah. So every, his birthday, every January, they'd come out with these collector's edition Elvis TV guides, and you could get one of three. Well, she got all three. And I got a trove of collector TV guides, the Elvis special edition. I got Elvis playing cards, some other stuff. I mean, it was, there was a lot of Elvis to go around. And when she started going gray, which apparently none of us were allowed to ever acknowledge, she started dyeing her hair nice and easy, number one, because that's what Elvis used. So I think, like I said, going back to my original point that I come by the goth aesthetic a little naturally, we never knew that it's because of him. Who knew? So it was, it's just wild because I don't know if it's just something that they do in southern areas or what it is. But everybody's family that I know of who comes from either southern Missouri or Arkansas, definitely anywhere around Memphis, there is that, that Elvis aspect to the family. Y'all know what I mean? It's just weird. Like, I don't think you had it. I don't think they do it in Texas, really. But it's just something that, you, you know, you just grew up with. When I went to, when I went to Graceland for the first time, with my, when my husband and I were engaged, went to Graceland for the first time, it was kind of wild to like see all the places that my grandma had gone and all these places where she had gotten, she gets pictures in front of the wall you write everything on. She got pictures in front of the gate. She has to get pictures in front of Graceland. She's got to get pictures of Elvis's grave. She wanted a picture of Elvis's grave in all the seasons. And she got it. it. I mean, it was just, you know, it's just pretty, it's just crazy. But anyway, long story short, I never followed the family. But... It's it's just because it's a it's a iconic American thing, Elvis and rock and roll. And I know that there's a lot of arguments and debates about all of it. I just enjoy music for what it is. And he had an unmistakable talent. And the end of it, I ain't even gonna I ain't gonna fight with somebody over it because it's not even on the table for discussion for me to consider. Uh, but it's just it's just weird. It's like American iconography, you know. Even though she was the kid, and she didn't really do anything except look like the female version of him. Can we just talk about how strong those genes are for a second? His grandson, sadly, killed himself two years ago. Looked, spit an image of him. Oh, my gosh. Sidebar to this. I mentioned this to my, I told my husband. I said, his grandson was a spit an image of him. And my youngest was like, what is with your phrasing? What is this? It was another one of those things where he's like, what are you talking about? What does this even mean? Spit an image. Who spits on people? I'm like, oh my gosh. It's like I your your grandma said it. I, I don't know. He looks just like him. All those kids look like him. That's just some of the strongest genes I've ever seen in my life. Like three generations, them those genes are going. Crazy. Mm-hmm.